Hello everyone, welcome to the third video on how to make an FPS game. Uh, today we're going to make modular map pieces. Sorry, I had dust on my screen that needs to get off. Uh, also, very cool, and I'm going to stop complaining about it. Look at that. Look, three, two, one. There we go, connecting. And it's already up. <laughs> I did have a virus, I had this uh, search protect thing on my computer and uh, that made everything go really really slow and I didn't like it. So let's have a look, we've got our little character right here. As you can see that's our character, he still looks creepy, I didn't change him yet. Maybe should I make this into a full game I will adjust him, I will put a lot more work into it. Because for tutorial series, I'm going to show you guys how to do stuff, but I'm not going to do it the best I can. I know that's not really a good way to f see things, but yeah, I'm not going to put too much effort into into making them look perfectly. I, I'll probably do time lapses with in in some time of uh, characters that will look a lot a lot nicer. But yeah, let's uh, load in. Blender. I'm going to load in my. Well, I'm going to load in the dummy. I'm going to go to object mode. Again, you can still download. Well, I'm going to leave the download on the website so you can always download the character from the website. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a box that's about the size of our character. S Y There we go, that's about our character. Now I'm going to delete this guy. And there we go. So that's basically the height of our character. The the reason why I'm doing this is uh in modular building you don't want to screw around with scaling times two or scaling minus minus a half uh a half because that will change your normal mapping, it will make it look or blurry or not good enough. <laughs> so things like that, and damn it, dust on my screen. So the first modular building thing that I'm going to make is a floor. Yeah, I'm going to go to edit mode, S2 to make a very big floor, SZ, and I'm going to scale this down on the z-axis like so i'm going to take these guys pull them down even more so we get a nice little floor now this looks <laughs> I, I want to say crappy because it actually does but this is a good representation of how you can do this uh, there's two ways for example uh, you want to have a floor with a lot of junk on them, then you might as well just add in a couple details to it. For example, you want this to be up higher or this side, you can always do that. What you could also do is you can, and, and I'm going to make it a little bit higher by the way, just so you guys know, to have a little ledge. What you could also do is just export this as your low poly model and use normal mapping to do so. I'm going to use both for this little tutorial, but uh, I just wanted to explain to you guys what how the two ways you can do this. So first way is just export this. If you have a flat floor and you just want to have a texture on it or just a little bit of, of detailing, it's fine to, to export it like this. But if you want like ledges that will be on all the, the all the maps like this, then you definitely need to put them in here, like I'm going to do. So I'm going to make two lines, scale them on the y-axis to put them where I want them to be. I think this hallway is more than big enough for our character. Now I'm going to select these two faces, and I'm going to drag them out by two. So that gives a little visual representation, a little bit of 
detail to the to the model. Another thing that I'm going to do to this guy is I'm going to select these two faces, uh, these two edges, and I'm going to scale them on the y axis a little bit more, like so. So this again it gives a little bit more detail to what we're doing. Why am I doing this? Well, the next thing that I'm going to make, I'm not going to do the normal mapping. I mean, I, I did tutorials on how to do normal mapping and stuff like that, so there's no need for me to do it right now. The next thing that I'm going to do, and that's going to be a new object, is basically I'm going to, you no, know, I first should uh, export, uh, not really export, but clean this up just a little bit. Like these two, I can merge them at the last one. So that gives a little bit less poly count, lower poly count. And this is something that you'll need to do on all the models if you are working like this. Because keep in mind that was one face, well actually four faces that I had too many, four faces. Okay, it's just four faces, but imagine if you have over 100 different uh, models, and trust me, if you're making a really big game, you will have a lot of models. Those four times a thousand is 4,000 extra polys. Let's say it's just one, one kilobyte, that means that you have one megabyte of useless stuff in your game. Also, the rendering and uh, the uh, what's it called? The the visual aspect, the, the loading in of the screen, it will take a little bit longer and your your performance will be a little bit lower. It will it will lose like one FPS or two FPS. But imagine if you have that on all your models, then you'll you'll lose many, many FPS frames per second for those who don't know what it is. So that's going to be our basic floor. Now a basic floor that's all good and fun but we do want to have a floor that we can like a crossroad and a T and stuff like that. We'll also want one that is twice as long. So I'm going to grab this, put it back in the middle and S Y two. So S Y two. There. So we have a long one, and I forgot to copy paste this, so shift D. This is going to be the long one, and this one, SY.5, this one is going to be the short one. Why do I do this? Well, basically, um, <coughs> if you are making a game, you will need to, uh, you want to have some short, some some long ones, because if you have a really long corridor, you might want you maybe want want to have the long ones because that will fit in better, and you will need less pieces than the short ones. So that's that. Of course, I'm going to do the T junctions now. These are going to be fairly simple as well, and after that, we're going to make a long hallway with a door. A basic door so the character can get through it and enter a room. So uh, I'm just going to do corridors. I I might do a time lapse at the end of the video. So once the tutorial is done, you might see a time lapse, which will t show you guys how to make rooms and well different parts. So different more um, what's it called? Different modular building parts. Okay, so I'm going to take a copy of this floor, I'm going to put it in the middle, drag it down like so. And I know this is going to mess everything up just a little bit, but I don't care. No, I should have placed it right here and drag it down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to pivot point, cursor, shift D, Rotate 90, select everything, shift D, rotate, rotate 180. There we go. This isn't the crossroad yet, but it will be fairly soon. Now for the crossroads, I want to have it like this, going like that. So 
like a, an octagonal thingy. And the best way to do that is the one, well, not the best way, but the way that I do it is the one that I'm going to show you guys right now. So first I'm going to delete all these face, uh, all these vertices, might as well do it right. Vertices. And now we just have this line left. I'm going to go to my edge selection tool, select these, select these, select these. And as you see, I'm not going to do the bottom side just yet. And my colors, my, my textures are really dark. We're going to change that as well. So now these. And again, I'm going to wait with doing the middle ones until I did these uh, gap thingies, face, 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 and, oops, face. Oh, I get one more. There. Now the problem is, as you can see, these are really thin. These little thingies, they're too thin for what I want to do. And the problem here is, if I make them the right size, there's going to be a problem with uh, these edges. So let's first get ourselves these lines set up, like so. And on the top side as well, I should have done the top side first because that's the most important one. That's the one that you guys will see. There and there. Now I'll connect these two together if there aren't yet, but they should be. And then press A two times or one time to select everything. Control N and as you can see, it gets brighter. The way it was, as you, whoops, that was not what I wanted to do. So fast, do it again. Also, the fact that I'm going crossways, that's not something that you guys should do. It's just a personal preference to do it. So as you can see now, it's really dark. If I put this one right next to it, you can see it's way too dark. The control N, because now the faces are all on the inside. If you're outside the model, you won't see a thing. Well, you, you will see the inside. You will see the bottom one from the inside, but you won't see the top side. That's because the faces are on the inside. So control N, make sure that the faces are on the outside. And if you tap it, they go back inside. Later on, when we're going to put make cubes and stuff like that, that's kind of important to know, but not yet. Okay, so we get ourselves the corner thing. And for most people, I need to go back to medium point. For most people, this will be fine, but not for me. I mean, look at that. It fits up nicely, but this one isn't good enough for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this one, one back. I'm going to select these three edges and extrude them like so. Same over here, extrude like so. And we're going to do the same to these. So, and like so. I'm just showing you guys how I do it because maybe some people will have problems with getting this done. You never know. Okay, and our lines are fit, filling in, fitting up nicely. Before I do anything else to this, I am going to Shift D, drag this out for a second. 
I'm gonna drag these out one to that side. I'm sorry, there's a fly in my room and it keeps sitting on my nose. So now I'm going to take all these sides on this object. All of them. Come on. Even this one. And well, I need to delete these as well. So faces, goodbye faces. This is going to be the the T junction thing. If you guys want to have a T junction in your game, <clears throat> if you watch my my tutorial video on a, on a modular building, you guys know what this is, what this does. Okay, so T junction is done. Again, we you know we can't. Uh, take away any faces on this thing, sadly enough. So that's a T junction, and we do need to change something on here as well. I'll need to take this line, drag it up by one, these two dots, and this one needs to be dragged up by two, apparently, or just visually like so so these one visually and i should do that with the top side so one and visually there now the problem that i have now is this looks too big and again, this is fixable. We can just change a little detail. Whoops. I'm just going to select. No, just select these two. Thank you. So now I'm going to try to fit it in so it looks kind of straight. And this is just, again, this is a detail thing. This is a personal thing that I like to do just to get everything in nicely. So I'm going to do the same on this side, and that looks a lot better, a lot more even. I mean that there is a little bit of problem with the detailing, that's no big deal. But uh, again, it's a first person game, you never know when people will be looking at what you made. At the detailing of what you made, I mean. Like so. So that looks... Kinda right to me. Maybe a little bit too much on this thing. And these as well. There. So that's that. And now we need to do the same on the octagonal. And I will do that in a in a fast time lapse for you guys. That. Okay, so we've got a T junction. A crossroad, a wall, uh, a floor, and a small floor. I am going to rotate this by ninety again. Drag it in again. Now, what you could do at this point, because these are your basic floor things, you could start making some normal mapping and stuff like that for these things. I'm not gonna. I will, however, do the unwrapping. Well, the 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 marking of the seams per second. If I get the right button. So this, this, this. I'm, I'm just trying to find out which ones are the best to do. Like these. I need to do the same over here. And I did it differently on the other one. There and there. So now I mark the seams. There, that's done as well. 
So we unwrapped all four of these. And now we can get into uh, making paths for uh, a door or something. So I'm going to take all four, all four of these. I'm going to drag them aside so I can see my character again. There he is. And I'm going to create a simple door. It's going to be a, a fig door because no, it doesn't have to be a, a fig door. It doesn't have to be, but I'm going to do it anyways, just because I want to have sliding, uh, sliding doors opening and closing this SX, something like this. And I will add a couple details to the frame as well. Like this, and there we go. So that's a kind of big door. I could drag these ones down. No, I know a better thing to do. Or not. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to delete all these faces. X faces. And I'm going to delete the bottom face because that's going to be a path as well. And now I'm going to select all these ones. I should actually clean that up before I do so. Merge. At last. And to the bottom ones as well. So this is again just a little detailing that we did to our door. We can see our character can walk through it and that's the only important thing that we need to know that he can go through or not. Now I'm going to select these faces. Extrude SX mm, something like this should be fine. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the top one, like so, just a little bit more. Okay, and now again, cleaning up. And I thought that it would make this into a cube, but it didn't. So uh, we're going to have to make faces over here as well. Like that. And the bottom side has faces, okay, so that's fine. Now, what I'm thinking about is maybe these ones are too low. Our head is here, so that would be at the chest area. I want them to be a little bit higher. Like that. And that's the detail part. Now, another thing that I want to do is I want to have like a little back, a console thing over here. But I wanted to have I want to have it on just one side, so I'm going to put a line in the middle. And yeah, you can make this a separate object, but I'm not gonna. And I'm going to drag this one. Whoops. I want to have these. So I'm going to drag these ones out. Something like that. And I think that was two, so. These ones for the other side, one, two, no, it was three. Now I'm going to select these edges, and this is just detailing. You don't have to do this. SX, something like that. So those are going to be my consoles. This is going to be a wall. So uh, everything will be fine, I guess. Okay, so we got this. This is, well, not too detailed. 
let's add in a numpad and a card reading thing. So just a little, oops, I need to make sure that this is correctly with the other side. Grab, so scale S.8, yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to do the same thing, S.8. Okay, now to drag it in, I'm going to, it's way too far, drag it in for two. And the same on this one, two. So that's looking like a console. I could add in a key card reader over here, but I'm too lazy. I'm just going to do a little console. It's like put your hands on top of it and the door will open if you have the right clearance. Okay, so we did that. This door looks kind of, well, I'm not going to say boring, but it does look kind of boring to me. It doesn't really matter. As long as the character can walk in and out, that's all fine. So I get my door. I'm going to take the right object, which is this one. Shifty. Rotate 90. And now I'm going to try to get in this door. As you can see, it fits in. But the problem is we'll also have a wall that is right there. So what I need to do is I need to drag this out by one because there's a wall right here. And I'm going to have to make a specific wall for this one. But yeah, that's a detail thingy. So I'm going to make two lines, SX, make sure that they fit in with our model. Something like that should be fine. And no, I, I won't do the, the specific faces for that one. I'm just going to get a little walkway going like so. So that means that I need to put a little line over here for a second and a line over here. Good. So I need to hook these guys up. And that's going up. That's not what I wanted them to do. That basically means I need to go to my separate view. Oh, come on, Neo. There. So I need to go to this view and drag it down so it fits in with the rest of the model. Is it fitting in? No, not yet. Grab Z. There. <clears throat> that it's a little bit offset isn't a big deal. So now I need to drag these, merge these to that one. Again, reduce the poly count. Same here. Reduce the poly count. And same there. Whoops, we got this one. Okay, so we reduced the poly count. Now we need to make faces again. And these I am going to extrude so they fit in on the door. That's not extruding, this is there. So that fits on the door. I might as well just pull it through to get it in the middle of the door. And that's basically going to be our walkway. Now, I, I, I have to be honest, I don't like this thing that I just did. But yeah, I'll have to make do with what I get. What I could do at the later stage is add like little barriers over here. But yeah, so this is going to be one little entrance. 
what I could do, let's say you want to have the smaller one to do this as well, you could take this one, drag it in, drag it in, and uh, you'll have a smaller one that does this, this as well. That's actually not a bad idea. So Shift D, I'm gonna put it on top of this one and drag it in. There. So that's another one that we did. I'm going to put this one down here. Okay. So sometimes, now you did this, sometimes you want to have the same thing on both sides. That's actually very simple to do. You just go down here, you put a line in the middle, you go to wireframe mode, you delete all these faces, you go to your modifiers and you add in a mirror modifier. There, that's done. Now the problem with doing this is, as long as you don't apply the modifier, you can just uh, make a normal map for half this image. So I'm going to save it, and now I'm going to clean it up yet again, because it's a lot of cleaning up. Merge at last. Luckily, this is just one line that we need to merge. Sometimes you have four or six lines that you need to do like this, and that's not a good thing. Oops. There and there. I think that's all the lines. Yes, that's all the lines. Okay, so now we've got this. I'm not going to do that for the smaller one. We just forget to do one little thing. So these faces. And I need to do the same on this one. There. So now, as you guys can see, I was an idiot because I I did uh, the double one on this one and I did the single one on the other one. Rotate 90. Drag it out. Okay, so these are our wall, uh, our flooring maps. I will need to do one little thing though to this one. Apparently it is 50% unwrapped, 50% is not enough, there, whoops, mark, seam, and on the other side as well. And I see I forget some other things to unwrap as well these guys whoops there so those are marked now on this one the same thing Right, so guys, let's say you're over here somewhere and you're rotating and you're modeling and your image isn't good. Just go to the point that you want to model, click on it and tap the dot on your numpad. You'll, you'll go straight to that point. So, okay, we made the maps for all of these. Let's see how long I've been busy now. About half an hour because I did a little bit of time lapsing. Okay, so these are going to be my floors, the ones that I made. I just explained to you guys how to do the, the modular building, how to make your assets and stuff like that. In the next one, 
will be doing will will be placing everything together you guys know how to make normal maps and stuff like that so i don't have to explain that to you guys i'll see you all in the next video tomorrow bye everyone